that the stock has been trading lower. It has been trading at a record low as well. Major European bank Credit Suisse shares plunge as bank fears widen. And just for context, Credit Suisse is so much bigger. Silicon Valley Bank had $212 billion in assets, while Credit Suisse has around $1.2 trillion in assets. In today's video, we will talk about Bitcoin, we will talk about altcoins, but just as an investor in all markets, Credit Suisse's biggest backer says they can't put up more cash. Of course, I'm speaking about the Saudi National Bank. Um, the Saudi National Bank said they're not going to be putting any more money into Credit Suisse after a cash infusion they had already done. So while the Saudis said no, actually, Justin, Credit Suisse asks the Swiss Central Bank for a public show of support meaning they're asking the bank for a public backing. And while for me, something like this, for me, doesn't really instill confidence if they're, if they're making these public statements, the bank does insist that its financial position is not a concern, with the chief executive saying that its cash reserves are still very, very strong. But I do want to kind of piece through how we got to this level, because yes. people in the U.S. don't necessarily follow Credit Suisse that closely, but it is a large bank. It is uh, Its assets are more than $550 billion or so compared to uh, Silicon Valley Bank at around $200 billion. So, so Yahoo Finance says over $550 billion, some analysts stating over $1.2 trillion. Either way, Credit Suisse is at least double what Silicon Valley was. And let's just look at a timeline. Credit Suisse timeline of key events, why some investors, starting from almost 10 years ago, have started to lose confidence. The timeline is long here. It goes back even further than this when you look at some of the issues. But Tijan Tian became the CEO, um, and he was the person who was meant, he was an, an outsider, he was not Swiss, he was meant to sort of turn things around. And then the company just got hit by various external and internal frauds. He ended up having to be forced to step down in 2020. And then in 2021, there were the failures of a couple of hedge funds and, ca and capital firms that were really tied to uh, Credit Suisse, Greensill Capital, Archegos Capital, and that really then accelerated, I guess yeah. you could say, some of the issues at Credit Suisse. So stick with this for a second, because the hosts are about to compare Credit Suisse today with Bear Stearns back in 08, and then at the very end, the latest Credit Suisse news today. It really reminds me of Bear Stearns back in the day. Mm. I guess we keep reverting to these 2008 crises parallels because, well, that was a banking crisis. Not that that's going to be the centerpiece, but that's what we're dealing with today. And back in 2008, Bear Stearns failed in March of that year. So we're looking at the 15-year anniversary. But the year before, the summer of 2007, we had a couple of hedge funds by Bear Stearns that went belly up. And that was a real harbinger of what was to come in the global financial crisis. So, yeah, looking back on this timeline, you can see some of the echoes or at least some of the fingerprints that are similar between these two uh, entities. Right. So they, they, you know, there was a money laundering criminal conviction that was related to the bank that happened, ended up happening in 2022. It was for money laundering in Switzerland. It was connected to a Bulgarian drug smuggling yes. ring. You get the idea here. So the CEO uh, that succeeded Tijan Tiam was Thomas Gottstein. He was forced out. There was a new CEO, Oleg Korner, that came in. And then uh, back in October, the company cut 9,000 jobs. It got a capital injection at that point. It also ended up reporting a loss for last year. And then more recently, just in the past week, the company said it had found material weaknesses in its accounting and delayed its annual report. So that was tied up in the most recent slump that we've seen in the stock. Right. But more broadly, at a time when the international banking system is in a very delicate position because of SCVB. They're worried about where the, the old, other vulnerabilities are. Here comes Credit Suisse with what look like a lot of vulnerabilities. Yes. And then, of course, in summation, before I share with you my opinion, as well as the latest Bitcoin news. And let me just, I want to put this in the context of maybe a 50,000 foot view here. This is, um, we, we, we don't face anything like the situation that we faced in 2008 for a number of reasons. Um, the Federal Reserve has just guaranteed all FDIC deposits above $250,000 in a bank. That means your money in a U.S. bank is safe right now. So all these people Googling, uh, where is my money safe? 
safe? Do I need to pull money out of my bank? Your money is safe if it's in an FDIC insured bank here in the US. What we're talking about are the effects for investors, people who have bought the bonds and stock of some of these banks. And then we're also separately talking about Credit Suisse, which is a European bank and all their troubles right now and how that might be resolved. Uh, and we could talk about that for a while. There's contagion effects, yes, um, and there will probably be not just you know the, the three or four banks that we've seen run into trouble now, there'll probably be more, but uh, does it develop into a full-blown crisis or is it kind of a, a piecemeal thing where it's dragged out over years? I see it more like the dot-com crash where we had Enron, WorldCom, than we had, two th than we had in 2008 where we had a cascade of failures, everything at once. Right, exactly. This does not feel like that. Right, like the and ground think, is falling out. And I think that's a really good distinction that you made between like people holding money at banks. Do not go to your bank and pull out all your money. I think like, don't do that if that's what people are thinking yeah. about out there. And that's a very fair point that it's just the investors in this bank, the shares, the shares are tanking right now. As stated by the CEO, the assets are fine. Now click subscribe because you want to stay up to date on this. Now, of course, perfect timing, potentially even bigger news. The Fed's next meeting is next week. And of course, the big question is, will they continue raising, i.e. suppressing markets? That's one of the major reasons we've seen these banks collapse. It was part their fault, part the Fed going crazy fault. But next week, will we get an increase, a pause, or a pivot? Well, the latest data as of yesterday shows us that inflation is coming down. Headline CPI was 6%. It was projected it was going to be 6%. And core CPI, 5.5%, just like projected. Now, understanding what that means in the grand scheme of things, yes, month over month, we're slightly coming down, but inflation is still super sticky. This would suggest the Fed would at least either pause or raise another 25 basis points. Of course, the massive instability in all these banks would suggest the Fed broke something and they need to pause now. What does the market think? Well, the market now thinks there's a higher probability of no hikes at the next FOMC, more than 25 basis points at the next FOMC, meaning the economy is getting sick quickly. The market is projecting that the Fed wouldn't dare raise another 25 basis points because of what we've just seen. Of course, 45% of the people compared to 55% of the people think we will see that rate increase. Now, as banks are going down, Bitcoin is going up. Bitcoin dominance reaches nine month high. Obviously, a big reason this is happening is because people want out, a peaceful way to opt out of the traditional system, but also the alts are bleeding back into Bitcoin. Here are all the major alts paired, not against the US dollar, but paired against Bitcoin. And we can see the trend is pretty obvious. Of course, innovation is still happening, case in point. Uniswap version 3 has just gone live on the BNB chain. And while we knew Uniswap to be the primary DEX for the Ethereum ecosystem and PancakeSwap to be the primary DEX for BNB chain, over 66% of Uniswap governance voters said yes to supporting the deployment. Why Uniswap wanted to come to BNB chain as their next obvious chain, because BNB chain is one of the world's most active blockchains by daily volume. And in a direct quote from the director of growth at BNB Chain, he says, with BNB Chain's thriving and dedicated community, scalability, and accessibility, it's a launch pad for all things Web3. The reason somebody would come here would be protocols looking to reach larger audiences can grow. So if you like Uniswap, you love this. And speaking of stakers, the final dress rehearsal for the ETH upgrade just happened. Staked Ethereum withdrawals are being processed on Ethereum's Go Early testnet ahead of the Shanghai fork. And why this was significant, like I said, this was the final dress rehearsal for Ethereum's upcoming Shanghai upgrade, more accurately known as Chappella, occurred Tuesday. And the test happened. It was a success. People were able to withdraw their staked ETH on the testnet, meaning activating this feature live on the mainnet will occur sometime next month. And my brother and I will be speaking next week at Outer Edge LA, specifically who else is on our panel. We have Elio Trades, we have Tiffany Fong, we have BitBoy. Going to be a great panel happening Wednesday, March 22nd at 2.30 p.m. Be sure to use code altcoindaily. 
VIP, Altcoin Daily VIP for 10% off your ticket.